Hey, good morning, everyone. Ben here. Uh, today's an interesting day because I am starting a new rotation. I've been off of like in-person rotations since like September. Um, in December, I went to a couple of sites, but it was only like once a week. But I'm officially back in in-person rotations for the month of February and the month of uh, the month of March. So it'll be interesting. I haven't seen a patient physically in a long time. And also last week I went to Miami and I've been a bit of a hot mess. I got my schedule kind of um, in disarray because I was chilling and then I'm like, okay, I gotta get my life back together. So I've been a little, a little bit of a hot mess, but honestly today was orientation and I felt like the start of orientation was a little jerky too. So um, everyone's a hot mess. Uh, we were supposed to get a Zoom link. We didn't get it until one minute later. And then only I found the Zoom link of our like 16 person cohort because it was hidden somewhere then i had to send it out so yeah it's been it's been it's been pretty hectic um orientation took only like 30 minutes i'm supposed to go down to near grady hospital which is the premier hospital in atlanta and get my little uh card for students because i'm doing a visiting rotation this time which is through another university system not my school so i have to get that school's little card uh, so I'm gonna get that and then I have a couple of hours off until the afternoon where I actually do have to report for duty so um, I'm supposed to report at 2 p.m. but I looked at the schedule for the clinic I'm working with so I'm doing an HIV psychiatry elective which I'm super super excited for but I looked but the last patient today is scheduled at 3 so today I think it's just going to be me negotiating my schedule, meeting the per my course director, and just talking about my interests and why I decided to sign up for this rotation. So it'll be fun, it'll be interesting. So I'm gonna get dressed, head down to Grady Hospital and get my Emory card, and then come back and chill a little before having to head out again. So I'm ready to go and I wanted to show y'all, I got this like new soft shell jacket and it's so nice, it's like water resistant and it's perfect for a short trans guy because the length sits right at where my booty is but also it has like these it has like these velcro straps for the wrists so the arms the arms don't go past my wrist which is a huge issue i have with jackets i always need to get jackets hemmed but since it has this velcro attachment i look super fabulous without having to do any form of extra alteration, wasting my time or my money if I have to go to an alterer. And I also really love how warm it keeps me. It's great for work. Uh, it fits every setting that you would need to wear this in. And also because it's water resistant, like I've said, it's been raining in Georgia for like a month and a half straight right now. So it keeps me, it keeps me dry. The brand is called Arduco. I don't know what it stands for, but it has a little cute little logo. It's right here, Arduco. Um, and I will probably put the link down below because I, it's really hard for trans mask people to find clothing that fits them right. And because like I found a similar jacket like this at Costco the other day and <laughs> The coat went down to my thighs and that is not flattering at all. So I totally get that struggle. So I'll, put, I'll probably put a link down below to get the jacket. This is not sponsored at all, but I'll probably put like a little affiliate link. I don't know how to do that, but apparently it allows you to make some commission. And since I'm becoming more and more into like, you know, vloggers type situation, maybe uh, y'all can help me if you want this jacket. Y'all can give me a little extra cash if you want to help support uh, my content. And just a quick thing I wanted to share with y'all before I head off to uh, get my little badge slash card is that uh, recently my girlfriend has been telling me that you can't keep wearing the same Hoka shoes all the time. I've been wearing the Hoka of these really beautiful gray um, charcoal gray Hoka Clifton 8s that I've been wearing for a while. I mean, you saw in my last video, I cleaned them, like made them look perfectly pearly clean. Um, but I've been wearing them for eight months. I love them. They are amazing. Ever since my ankle injury, I haven't been able to wear shoes the same way ever again. So recently I decided I wanted to try two new brands of shoes because although the Hokas are perfect as far as injury prevention, it does lack in a bit of other things such as I need to find something that has a little bit more grip in the bottom soles. I know Hoka has some models uh, like that but Hokas are also very very expensive and I wanted to get two pairs of shoes to kind of have on my regular rotation. 
So I ended up getting, and I talked about this in my Instagram story last night, I think. I got these Ultra Lone Peak 6s. Ultra is a running shoe brand that's known for making trail running shoes, and they definitely live up to it. Look at all this traction. It's like a tire um, that the shoes have, so it keeps you from slipping. This is great, especially on slippery surfaces, like whether it be um, slippery hospital uh, <laughs> tiles or um, really leafy hills like we get here in Georgia. Another really great thing about these Ultra Shoes, this is the Lone Peak 6 model. I'll also put a link uh, in the description. Uh, but what I really love about the Ultra brand is they're also really known for having a very wide toe box. So, you know, in a lot of shoe companies, especially with Adidas and Nikes, I've noticed my feet get cramped. Like my toes are always cramped like this. Ultra Shoes allow your toes to be more roomy so you can actually spread them out a little so my hokas they are comfortable for standing for a long period of time running around my feet never get like sore the the sole of my feet never gets tired but with these ultras i noticed that my toes are very comfortable <laughs> um which is an interesting feeling i've never felt that way with another shoe before and i can't really explain it but i just feel more free kind of like when nike's um free running uh fly knit shoes were really popular it kind of made me feel that type of way but definitely like it, it just felt like my toes can wiggle around more in these shoes which is really interesting uh the next pair of shoes that i got are kind of a classic that i've had before i got my hokas are adidas boost shoes um my first three years of med school, actually, I wear I wore a pair of Adidas Boost shoes, and I even wear it through my internal med and surgery rotations, where I had to stand for six to eight hours at a time. And those Boost shoes <laughs> kept my feet alive, along with some compression socks. Um, but at the end of those two rotations, I definitely needed to upgrade my shoes because those shoes were totally wrecked after I went through those rotations. Also, I got a little bit of blood on them. <laughs> <laughs> that I felt really gross about cleaning. So uh, I ended up discarding those shoes and that's how I, it led me to get the Hoka Clifton 8s. So it's been a while. It's been about maybe six months since I've worn a pair of Adidas shoes and I definitely noticed the difference now. So the boost soles, obviously super bouncy, uh, super, super comfortable for standing for a long period of time, but I totally forgot how constricting Adidas makes their shoes so it's like incredibly narrow right here so i noticed that my feet do feel a little cramped hokas also have this issue that's why i had to get the wide size but yes it's super cramped compared to the ultra shoes which is not really cramped at all i mean look at look at the sole differences here uh another thing i noticed about these is that like i said not a lot of room for the toes which I think I'm getting spoiled with the ultras. Anyways, I just realized I talked about like shoes for like six straight minutes. So I'm gonna I'm go down to Grady and uh, get get my <laughs> get my uh, Grady uh, my card. But um, as I've been talking to you all, I wanted to show y'all what Jean Luc has been, been doing. He's trying to get inside the box of shoes, the box that the shoes came in. Hey baby, what you doing? Yo. You trying to dig in there? Yeah? All right, I'm gonna just let him do what he what he needs to do. Whew. Okay, I just got back from getting my little uh, card. Honestly, it was the same card I already have along with the card for the institution that I'm visiting for. So um, since I was already in like the electronic medical record system, here in Atlanta, I didn't really have to sign any forms. I just went in and out. So I only had to pay like $2 for parking, which is a steal because in downtown Atlanta, if you stay at a parking spot for more than 30 minutes, you're gonna be spending at least six to $10. So that was awesome. So then before I, uh, before I came home, I made a quick grocery run, but I wanted to show y'all what I got and I'll explain why I got this. So I got some popcorn chicken. And you'll be like, Ben, why'd you get popcorn chicken? Well, 
earlier last month i saw a tiktok on india tiktok for some reason why i was getting marketed that um but not tiktok instagram reels but um earlier last month i saw that in kfc in india they have popcorn chicken maggi noodles and recently my mom went to bangladesh i've talked about this in other vlogs but my mom came back with maggi noodles from bangladesh and um I went to KFC and I tried to see if they had popcorn chicken near the KFC I live at. They don't they don't serve it. So I thought the next best thing was to get uh, frozen popcorn chicken that I'm going to air fry and stir in with the Maggie noodles my mom got me. So uh, we can make our own version of KFC popcorn chicken Maggie noodles um, later in this vlog. And I also got some pineapple juice. If you're wondering why is because... I want to make uh, my next meal prep meal is going to be an impression of pollo tropical. Back when I went in Miami last week, when we went, we went to this fast food chain called pollo tropical, and they're known for making citrus grilled chicken, and I freaking loved it. It was amazing, and I was like, this would be a great meal prep marinade um, for my regular rotation. So I went online, and actually, there's uh, like copycat recipes for pollo tropical. So I got some pineapple juice and maybe if there's enough time in the vlog, I'll show y'all uh, how I made it and how it tastes like kind of like a reaction, but we'll see. Uh, I feel like this vlog is already long enough. So it's about 12 p.m. I have about an hour before I have to get ready to show up for my first day and John Luke's about to jump onto the counter. But I have about an hour left until I have to get ready for um, for my first day at work. So I'm gonna I'm rest a little, eat lunch, uh, get dressed and head over there. And I'll see y'all on the other side. Before I head off to my first day at work, I wanted to show y'all what I typically wear on a psychiatry rotation, which is typically different from when I'm rotating through a hospital or when I'm rotating at other medicine type rotations. So because it's psychiatry, uh, psychiatry tends to be the chillest of the specialties next to pediatrics. So we actually dress pretty casual for an office setting, especially in outpatient psychiatry, which is not in the hospital. So I decided to go with a uh, casual, like casual-esque uh, button down t-shirt with some pants and with a little belt. Uh, you'll notice that uh, I'm not wearing a tie. So in psychiatry, it's actually discouraged to wear a tie or anything that can potentially harm you if a patient is going through a crisis. Remember, they're going through some of the most vulnerable points in their life when they see you in like a psych emergency setting. So they might not trust everyone that's around them. So it's really important to not just protect yourself, but also your patient by not wearing anything that can harm you. So I, we don't wear anything that's sharp or uh, anything that can be used uh, as a weapon. So we don't wear ties in psychiatry and we definitely don't wear like tie pins, which are pretty sharp. And then I put on this um, sweater jacket kind of situation. The Patagonia Better Sweaters are actually super popular among healthcare workers because they're very comfortable and have a lot of pockets to put a lot of things that you would normally put on a white coat. I hate wearing the white coat, which is great because I uh, opt to wear this Better Sweater jacket, which is a lot warmer and it doesn't create that dichotomy between you and the patient. The patient just sees you as a normal person that's taking care of them. And of course, I finish off the look with some brown cushioned shoes and my work backpack. My work backpack basically just has my laptop in it. I'm not bringing my stethoscope because this is psychiatry. If I was in a medicine type rotation or an in-hospital psychiatry rotation, I would bring my stethoscope so I can uh, listen to the patient's heart and other things. But in a regular outpatient office psychiatry setting, I just go with my laptop so I can access the medical records, but no need for any fancy devices. And we're back, y'all. Uh, first day was super chill. I only stayed there for about an hour. Apparently, all the three, three o'clock appointments canceled because weather in Georgia has just been ridiculous. And because I'm working at a free HIV clinic, a lot of these uh, patients don't have transportation on their way to get to clinic is through public transportation and we know Georgia has terrible public transit uh, infrastructure so they were, more, well, they were more likely to not show up because they couldn't get access to transportation to our clinic. So I just got a, a little bit of a rundown for my expectations for this month, what I'm expected to do and the kind of patients I'll see and the people I'll work with. I'm really excited for this because a huge part of this clinic 
consists of therapy and most of my psychiatry experience has actually been only on medication management and less on therapy and i want i want to be a good well-rounded psychiatrist so i think it'll be really awesome for me to learn how to give effective therapy especially for patients who've gone through the trauma that having an hiv diagnosis is like in the initial stages and learning how to cope with an illness anyways since i'm back i'm gonna change back into regular clothes and uh get some chores done and stuff for the day oh all right y'all it's been a couple of hours i've been doing chores like no one's business around the house i prepped some of my meal prep uh cilantro lime brown rice with beans and then i did the laundry turns out one of my dish uh my dishwasher pot not dishwasher what's it called laundry pods it didn't completely dissolve so when i dried all my clothes it still had like stains on it um so i had to re-wash my clothes much to my dismay because i wanted to fold those clothes today um so i had to do that and then study for about an hour i got a lot done in the last couple of hours actually but i am starving right now uh, it's definitely dinner time so uh right now um my mom like i said my mom did give me some um uh, maggie noodles and um also some specific mr noodles variety of it uh this one is magic masala uh, so we're gonna be using that it's actually in bengali i don't know if y'all can read that i can't read bengali either but it's there's enough english that says magic masala <laughs> that i understand with vitamin b12 calcium and iodine okay so it's fortified that is great especially um from a country like bangladesh I'm glad the food is fortified there and yeah there's a bunch of stuff it's halal <laughs> i see that i see the halal sign on it so uh we're gonna be using these noodles which are similar to maggie noodles because i don't have maggie on hand right now and i'm gonna get out the popcorn chicken from the freezer and put it in the air fryer all right i'm gonna pop open the air fryer and I don't know how many pieces I should add. I know the noodles aren't much, but I do want more protein. So maybe I'll put like six, six-ish pieces in here. And hopefully I can open this. I always have trouble. It says resealable, but Kroger, you need to at least make it so that I can unseal it. Yeah, this is not happening. I'm gonna need to get, I'm, I'm gonna need to get some scissors. Got my scissors. Oh, you know what I could have done? I could have just... You know what? It's a lost cause of news. Okay, got him open. Ooh, these are big pieces. I'll have to go for smaller ones. Okay, this one's good. I think this will be okay. So I've got about six delicious pieces here. I think this should be enough for uh, the KFC Maggie noodles um, taste test that we're gonna do DIY because uh, apparently Atlanta doesn't, the closest KFC to me doesn't have any popcorn chicken and I don't have exactly Maggie noodles, but I do have Maggie inspired noodles-ish, masala noodles. Anyways, I'm gonna put these in I'm going to air fry these for 8 minutes at 350 degrees Fahrenheit. Let's start it so it gets super, super crispy and we're ready to eat. Okay, while the uh, popcorn chicken goes in the air fryer, uh, I must take some time to talk uh, to y'all about dealing with insecurity uh, in dating as a trans guy because I know it's something that comes up pretty a lot in the trans mask group, especially uh, when we date anyone really um, that anyone that's attracted to uh, cisgender men and I think a lot of it has to do with our feelings of inadequacy about whether or not we fit the definitions of what it means to be a man because historically and most of society denotes being a man to the features that westernized cis men have which is very tall um very muscular very very deep voices 
and kind of like the Prince Charming aesthetic that many of us trans folks uh, have issues with, especially people like me. I'm very short. I'm 5'3". I'm not over six feet. I don't have a super, super deep voice. My voice is masculine, but it's not necessarily like super masculine. I don't wear trucker hats all the time and lumberjack shirts. Um, I have a soft side. Uh, I, I like being vulnerable. And I'm not the type of person to, you know, hide my feelings away and just punch things to, uh, um, to get over my feelings. That's not the kind of man I am. Uh, unfortunately, uh, because of how society raises people who are attract attracted to men, they tend to look for those qualities. So I definitely get trans men who have a really hard time coming to the terms with the fact that they're not they don't they, they don't they don't meet these stereotypical qualities um, that people look for in the Western world. So that's. So this is where I'm going to foray into the fact that as I've gotten older, I, I tried really hard to fit a lot of these aesthetics. You know, I started wearing really dark colors, was super masculine to a little toxic when I first started coming out as trans, um, as, a, as a trans guy. And I see this a lot in trans guys. We try to overcompensate in the beginning stages of, of when we're coming out because we're trying so hard to be the definition of a man where we reach into our toxicity instead of reaching into who we are as human beings and not losing ourselves. And I think that's what's most important at the end of the day. I realize when I am myself, I attract people. No, I'm not going to attract every woman or every person that I'm attracted to that walks through the door. No, I'm not gonna do that. But I'm going to attract the people that I want to attract, even if it means that, you know, your ideal version of who you want to date is not attracted to you. And I think that's really important. Like, don't lose yourself as a trans masculine person when you are going through those beginning stages because you're going to feel that inadequacy. Another thing I also realized is that I identified as lesbian before I came out as trans and I lost the lesbian community when I decided to transition because I was no longer someone who identified as a woman and I don't think it was appropriate for me to stay in those spaces. So I lost lesbian culture, which is hard because then now I have to date in cis culture most of the time. Um, Yes, I can date in queer queer spaces, but you know, queer spaces are small and far between and sometimes it can get a little incestuous. So I was also open to dating outside of the queer spaces that I belong to. And then as time went on, I realized that I can I think a lot a lot of uh, a lot of worry that comes with trans mask is attracting cis women. Um and I realized that none of it really matters as long as yourself and you're confident about who you are. Because ever since I came out four years ago and I started taking tea, every time I walked through the door, I exhumed confidence. I'm proud of who I am and I own it. I own the fact that I'm a soft boy. I own the fact that I'm a short king. And because of that, I have attracted a lot of people in my life and that's not to like show off or anything but it just means that being me is what led to people being attracted to me. I didn't have to pretend to be something that I'm not, especially a toxic version of me that I never really wanted to claim as myself. So uh, be yourself and uh, everybody will come, uh, come following honestly. <laughs> that's my little dating advice for the trans masks out there today. Anyways, I think I heard the three minute timer for the air fried chicken, uh, popcorn chicken. So I need to put the uh, noodles in the microwave so the noodles are ready for um, this deliciousness. All right, y'all, the noodles are done and I'm already gonna tell you this, but it smells fantastic. Oh my God, I am so, so excited to eat this. All right, so, in the in the reels that we saw earlier what they did is that they placed the popcorn chicken on top of the noodles and then they ate it so we're gonna we're gonna recreate it just like that i'm gonna place the popcorn chicken on top i could sop up some of that 
get the breading to sop up some of that noodle there you go I could have actually gotten away with more uh, popcorn chicken pieces but I think I think this is good enough for a little small dinner before I have a more of a comprehensive <laughs> dish so we're gonna go to the coffee table and eat this and I'm gonna give you my reaction y'all I'm so so hungry and excited to eat this Ah, it smells so good like my mouth is watering and now it's like sopping up some of that popcorn chicken um, like popcorn chicken flavor ah oh my god I'm so ready I'm so ready okay I'm gonna have some of the noodles first oh and look at how steamy it is I don't know if the camera can see how steamy it is but it's really steamy mmm ah it has that Indian spice umami flavor that you don't get anything on any other noodle like brand other than maggie and the like indian south indian brands out there all right mm. Mm. so so good I mean, you know the, the softness of the noodles with the crunchiness of the popcorn chicken goes so well together it's a little hot though <laughs> i gotta be careful not to burn myself eating this and surprisingly enough the air fried popcorn chicken retains a lot of its crispiness even in the even in the noodle broth oh my god it's so good like the breading really does sop up all that flavor from the masala noodles Mm. Mm. highly highly recommend y'all should definitely try it out you can go to any indian store nearby and buy some masala noodles whether it be maggie brand or any other brand out there get some popcorn chicken from your favorite grocery store air fry it 350 for eight minutes mm. you'll be in heaven kfc you need to bring this to the u.s like this will this will sell out especially with us brown folk we'll come back every day for this if you're wondering like how i'm eating this when it's like this hot i don't know i'm always like two two degrees away from burning myself this piece has been sitting around in the broth for a minute let's see if it's still crunchy it definitely is thanks to the air fryer mm. oh my god so i just finished dinner it was so so good y'all y'all definitely need to try it oh my god i'm gonna i'm gonna have to go to the store to the bengali store down the street and buy more maggie noodles because that was phenomenal Anyways, y'all, uh, dinner is done. I'm about to uh, get dressed really quick and head to the gym, get my workout in, come back, freshen up, and go to bed. Um, a full day just went by. A full work day, too? Wow. I did all of that in one vlog. <laughs> but um, I hope you enjoyed following me through my day and that, um, you know, it gives you some tidbits about my life and hopefully inspires you to do more stuff in your day and do things that you love and enjoy. And uh, I hope that you'll follow me on Instagram and Twitter and come back for my future videos. And I'll see y'all in the next vlog. Mwah. This is Ben.